Okay, YouTube, I heard, had a little bit of a, uh, when I was doing an earthquake simulation video, I had a couple of comments. People uh, believe I needed to elaborate a little bit more on home generators. Now, on this page, I got several pictures here. I'll use uh, a little fork here for a pointer. You see here, this is uh, what you'd call a home standby generator. I consider those somewhere in the neighborhood of between 7 kilowatts to 7 kilowatts and up. Higher than 7,000 watts or higher. And you really have to go by, you know, th these generators like this are for, okay, if you have a big fuel supply like a 1,000 uh, uh, gallon uh, propane tank and you know, you want to run your central heat and air, and you want to run everything in your house. You know, mainly the water heaters and the central heat and air. Uh, that's when you get into the 12.5s and the, and the bigger kilowatt generators. Now, you have to remember that when you get these big generators, they're going to pull a lot of fuel. Lots of fuel. When I was discussing my generator, I was discussing something... For the poo-poo hitting the fan situation where maybe we couldn't get fuel, we wouldn't be able to, you know, resupply, uh, you, you wouldn't know when you're getting your, your supplies. You know, you, you'd have to be very thrifty, very thrifty with your fuel, and that's how I picked my generator. Like I said, I got a 3,500 watt generator. And uh, I've got deep cycle batteries hooked to my solar. This is what, kind of what it's showing in this picture right here. Uh, let me make it a little bit bigger. See if I can find the full size image there. Well, it's not that big. But anyway, they're showing a combination. Some solar panels. Uh, a wind, small windmill and uh, a small gas generator all working together. Which is the ideal thing. Unless you're like me and you're poor. So, I've got the little 3500 watt generator. Which is by no means not going to run any air conditioning in this house. It, well, it, it could probably run, it run, it'll pull 30 amps. And, um, let me get over here to my, I got a little, some paper here. Um, let me get this uh, light up. And, um. I want everybody to copy this down. If you do, all you have to do is get this. This is a basic electrical formula they teach in first year of electrical electronic school. Just draw you a circle and put P I E. I will equal amperage. E equals voltage, and P equals power. If you know any two, any two of these values, you can figure out the other value. Uh, so if I, if I want to know the amperage and I know the wattage, you know, it's advertised in wattage, I would go E divided into P. Okay. And I've done that here on this sheet, I believe. Okay. Here, here's where I did it. Okay. At 110 volts, I have a 3,500 watt. Uh, generator that will give me at full load of course there's a 4,000 peak but we're not counting that they give me about 31 amps yeah that'll pull that that would run an air conditioner but you know I don't want to have the, the thing running all the time I'm I'm going for the long term here and like a freezer this is just a general general thing yeah, the best thing to do is have one of those energy star freezers I mean the, the most efficient you can get, you can afford. Uh, so I have a, a freezer. If I looked on the back of the freezer, and it was showing 10 amps. Th this freezer is rated at 10 amps. Well, I need to know how many watts that is, okay? You go 10 times 110 volts would be an 1,100, watt, 1100 watts for that freezer. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Let's say we're talking in 12 volts because 
I'm going to use the generator to charge batteries, right? So that same, now we're down to 12 volts at 3,500 watts. So then I've got 291 amps per hour. That's 291 ampere hours. All right. Now, most deep cycle batteries, Marine, if you get true, make sure you get true deep cycle batteries, not the dual purpose one, but a true deep cycle will last longer. Uh, they average come in 150 to 200 ampere hour batteries. So to get 3,500 watt things, it's going to take me more than, it'll take a couple of good sized Marine batteries. All right, so this is where, you know, you get your expenses of storing the power in the battery. This is where it gets more expensive than actually the generator itself. Uh, now, that same freezer, 1,100 watts freezer, at 12 volts, showing 91 ampere hours. So, to run that freezer, now freezers don't run continuously unless you're putting a lot of stuff in it, okay? They cut on and off and on and off. But let's say that freezer ran solid for an hour. One hour continuous running. 1100 watts would be 91 amps. All right, that means a 200 ampere hour battery would probably run that freezer for two and a half. Well, not even two and a half. Two hours and I'm going to guess 15 minutes, two hours, 10 minutes, something like that. So to run it for eight hours overnight running continuously you would probably need at least three 200 ampere hour batteries. Uh, yeah, about three, maybe even four. All right. But this generator can charge those three or four batteries uh, 200 per hour. That would give, if you put got a high rate charger, uh, in about half the time, about three hours. Say an hour per battery. Just just be generous and we'll overestimate or underestimate however you want to do it. We'll give leeway and just say it that generator running at full bore will charge those batteries in three hours, four hours, something like that. And the the generator at running at full steam is gonna burn about a half a gallon an hour. So you to charge those batteries was two gallons of fuel. Of course then you can shut the generator off and run on the batteries till the batteries go low again then the generator starts up runs for two or three hours more and then shuts off and lets the batteries take it for eight hours you know two hours of running the batteries run for eight you know or what was it three or four hours running eight so you're in a day's time you're only going to run that generator for eight hours and the rest of it will come off on on the batteries that's how it pretty well works out but these are the formulas for that kind of stuff just remember that that formula right there with that you can calculate how many amps and what size batteries you need when you look at the ampere hours don't look at cranking amps that's misleading you don't want to say cranking amps because you don't want to use cranking batteries to store your electricity you need the deep cycle ones because the deep cycle ones have thicker lead plates in them and they're made to be charged and dis recharged, charged and recharged. That's why they call them deep cycle. They, they, they're made to cycle like that. And uh, that, that's what I used to do. But um, just remember, the chest freezer doesn't run all the time. So you're looking at least I, I would say in the summertime, be on the safe side, just to be safe, three 200 ampere hour batteries and uh, a power inverter that is at least uh, 1500 watts. You're better off getting, power inverters a whole nother subject, but a true sine wave power inverter, remember true sine wave versus modified sine wave, the true sine wave uh, will work more of your de delicate electronic stuff. They're better. But that's a whole other video on power inverters. We're just talking generators here and how to calculate what wattage you need. Like I said, you're going to run your whole house and you're going to run it 
on total generator, you're going to need a lot of fuel. 